All right, welcome back. You are looking at something a little bit different. It's mostly because basically all my F7F games got corrupted footage and I had to make something out of it without having to refly it again because I do think that some of these games are pretty good or at least good in terms of showing you. And I thought, let's try something else for a change. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I'm not going to be doing it again. But maybe it will give you some thoughts and some pointers that I can give from both point of view now. Because, well, I can actually switch now. I can actually show you how fast they are going. I can actually show you what they are doing. Their orientation. And basically everything when it comes down to the things that I think about. So the F7F is a plane with a lot of guns and an air spawn. Which basically puts it into a certain bracket of over-tiered vehicles. And the F7F3, let me tell you... Is definitely one of them. If you don't care about the replay system. You can fast forward a little bit into the video. It will be timestamped down below. And you will be able to see the game as you are normally used to. Without it looking ugly like with this right here. But if you don't mind. Here we are. Let's look at the guy we are engaging. We are going for the Spitfire here. We have a 162. He's going decently fast. But he's also very very low. We have an F for you. Not sure which one. I can see over here. But I don't know at the time. It's a 7. We can tell by this right here. But I'm going to go for the Spitfire first. Why is that? Because there's no one really higher than him. And if we go on over to this man. He's not going particularly quick. 400 as we can see. And he's basically the highest in his team. As you can tell. At least from the people that we can actually see. Because we don't see these guys. These are not spotted yet. Actually, those top two guys might actually be dead. Yes, they are. So, highest guy, decently slow, and the LF Mark 9 is very annoying to deal with. So, we are going to go for the Spitfire first. What can this Spitfire do to make sure that he doesn't die? Well, I need to make sure that he makes himself as hard of a target as possible. And he's not really doing a great job at that. He's going 500 right now, which is kind of okay. But he's just not looking around. And by the time he starts hearing me... At this point, he's only going 450. He starts dodging me. But look at us. We are coming from above. We are going 700. We still have 100 kilometers an hour before we rip our wings off. And by the time we get to him, look how slow he is going to be going. Probably like 350-ish. Or 400 speed, 350 IS. I'll take it. And he isn't even safe yet. He's now getting in gun range. So by the time I start shooting... There we are. He's going 440. Giving me an absolute broadside shot. This makes it very easy for us to just shoot him down. 300 meters shot. Very easy. A lot of guns. A lot of ammo. And he just gets himself to die. What do you want to do for the next time? You want to make sure that you have the speed to actually dodge us. And you do this by setting up properly. And by not dodging too early. By dodging very early, you're only bleeding speed. You're only making it easier for me to close the gap and to get closer to you and then by the time I actually get within gun range you've lost another 100 kilometers an hour you are basically a sitting duck and it makes it very easy for me to just beam you out of the air which is exactly what we did right there he reacted too late and when he did react to us he reacted wrongly and too soon if that makes any sense to you if it doesn't feel free to ask down below but I think it makes sense to me so, what do we have? We have a Horton flying away from us. We have an SK-60 flying towards us. 288 flying towards us. And other than that, we are somewhat in the clear. So, these two guys are the main enemy. This guy is definitely flying back to base. And here we have, uh, well, the SK-60. We are going much, much faster than him. And I know this because the SK-60 will not be going above 600, basically, when it comes out of that of engagement. I haven't actually checked yet. Well, that, that's just absolutely perfect. But he's going 600 and he is climbing. So by the time he gets to us, he will be a little bit slower. So we are in the climb. Keep in mind, we are still going faster than him right now. And we are higher. He is a jet. So yes, at this kind of speed, his retention will be better. But we are about to near the area where my retention will become better. So he's going 586 kilometers an hour. And he needs to turn to get to us. And he has the gun pots on. If he doesn't, well, he's not really a threat. And then I don't need to do this. 
but then he would have just flown away. He's going for the shot, which indicates to me that he has at least one gun. And now by the time he starts getting close to us, he's going 540. And we are nearing prop area here where my engine power will start overtaking his straight line retention. And I'm going 560. Look at this. I'm going faster with 1.7 kilometers of separation. Sure, the altitude advantage here will be closer to 1.3-ish. Let's see. Ah, I'm almost dead on. And the Horton is now also below us. But the Horton is also not going to really pose a threat. He is too slow. He doesn't have position and he's too low. So right now I'm just going to be ignoring him. And the SK-60, he can't really do much here. And if he tries to pitch up, he's dead. I will be able to complete this loop before he does. And he pitches up for us for a little bit. We are now going 480. He's going 474. So essentially the same speed. Where did I go? There we are. And he is turning away from me at this point. Because we've already basically went head to head. He's already had a shot at me and he keeps turning. So right now he is wasting speed again. And he's essentially giving us his 6. Which is fine with me. That's absolutely perfect. And then he goes straight. Which is what he should have done from the start. Because right now he's lost a lot of speed. And we are on this guy's 6. If he goes vertical... He is dead. And you can tell because I'm going 520. This guy is essentially stalled out. and Or not stalled out. But he's going very slow. And he's going vertical here. So he's going to lose more speed going upwards. We are going to pick up speed going downwards. Sure it will increase our, our turning circle. But it will also increase the rate of which we will get the nose on him. Provided we don't go too fast. Now the Horton is going to become a little bit of an issue. I am going to be looking at him. I'm not sure how fast he's going. I haven't been observing him properly. I just know that he is not going particularly fast. And that's exactly what's going on here. I don't need to know everyone's exact speed. No need for that. Why? Because he's not in the position here to actually kill us. I just know that I have more energy and that I don't really need to worry about him. And that's all I need to get at. So we are diving on the SK-60 here. And we will be able to get the shot here if he goes vertical. Because again, he's going vertical. He's losing speed while turning. And it makes us him a basically sitting duck as well. So we are just going to be pulling in. And if we do get our nose on target, he dies. And look at that. He's going 340. By the time I get here, he's basically stalled out. And I'm still turning. So I'm able to pull in here. And he's going 300. At this point, he is not able to really dodge me anymore. 600 meters. Still closing the gap. And look at that. Basically, until this point, right here. It's maybe a little bit sooner because he died. I will not be having, having an angle anymore. And that's just because he's going so slow that the trajectory that he's taking right here, like from here to there, basically takes him um, half a minute. Of course, it's a little bit of a hyperbole. 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 Overreacting. That's the word I'm looking for. Because he's going so slow. He's not actually completing his turn. So even though he turns better than me. Because he's so slow. He's just sitting in front of me. And I just get the ability to beam him right out of the air. Now we are going to go back and look at the Horton 229. I have one directly below me. And there's two next to us. We have this one right here. And the other one just crashed actually. So we don't even have to worry about him anymore. So we're going vertical. And this guy has no chance of going up for us. Because right now we are going the same speed as him, essentially. He's going a little bit faster, I believe. Yeah, he's going 525. We are going 490. But we have a lot more altitude. And we are on his 6. So he needs to turn much more in order for us to actually get... He needs to turn more for him to get shots on us. And he's Horton at these speeds. If he starts pulling very hard, he is not going to have a very good time. So, Black Car here. The Black Claw starts climbing away. And I'm going to climb as well. Because if I start chasing this guy, eventually he will start outrunning me. And then I have an energy disadvantage, which is what I want to avoid. Is there anything else around us? No, not really. So we can go for the Yak-9, the Horton 229 and the F4U that just actually died. Looks like Johnny Sins over there. So who are we going for? The Yak-9 first or the Horton 229? I'm going to take a shot at the Yak-9, but I'm going to focus on the 229. Why? Because the Horton is a much more dangerous target. And the Yak-9 is going, I don't know how slow, but not faster than 350. Yeah. I was going to say 300. Wanted to be a little bit generous. It's hard to tell when he's in that kind of engagement. 
But it doesn't matter. He's almost stalling out. He is not going to accomplish anything here. And that makes him a very easy shot. Which is why I'm going to try to get a shot on him. But I will still focus on the Horton. So I can see if I can get within range. And I can. So we shoot just a streak of bullets. If it hits, it hits. And it does. No major damage here. But it doesn't matter. If it had killed him, that was fantastic. It didn't. But that's not an issue. We are then going to go continue on for the Horton. And the Horton is again going super, super slow. Probably about 400-ish. There we go. 360. And we are now able to just gun him down. Because he's too slow to really dodge us. And you will see that he will turn very quickly. He has an absolute easy time getting guns on us. But he's just too slow. He is not able to complete his turn. Why? Because he doesn't have the airspeed and he doesn't have the energy to do so. And again, it doesn't matter that they are more maneuverable. It doesn't matter that they are able to instantly turn into you. If they don't have the speed to do so, they will simply fall out of the air and hang inside of your guns. Same thing with the Yak-9 here. He's going vertical after the F-80. F-80 baits him absolutely perfectly. And he's probably going about 200 now. If even that, 217. Good enough. Gets his wing blown off at like 800 meters. Because this guy is essentially stalled out. And that is going to be kill number 4. Now there is a A21 here. And here I make a bit of a mistake. Why is that mistake? Because there is a guy directly next to me. And I am greedy for the kills. Because I want to show off what planes can do. So I get a little bit overzealous. Otherwise I would have done this. Would have gone sideways. Went over. Dropped in behind him. And we would have done essentially the exact same thing as we did to the SK-60. This guy just took off. He's from the runway and he's probably still climbing. So I'm going to guess about 350-ish, 400. Maybe a little bit quicker. There we go. 340. And again, you don't need to be spot on as long as you are in the ballpark. Unless you are fighting something that's very close in performance. You need to know their exact kind of speed. If you then misjudge it by 20 or 30, you are dead. However, right now he's in a jet. We have the altitude advantage. And we should be able to just stall this guy out. The issue is, F-80 coming in. I get a bit greedy. And I think to myself, well, he's going super slow. And he's probably going about 220-ish in a second. When he starts switching in. Yeah, right here. A little bit quicker. And this is exactly what I mean. If you misjudge him a little bit. If you try to be risky. This is what you get. We go head on with him. He has the gun pot on. He has a lot of guns. Sure there are only 8mm. But I shouldn't have taken this head on. I misjudged his energy state. And I rushed my kill to beat my teammate. And in doing so. I got my dumbass crit. We get a dumbass hit on him. With like 150 cal. And he gets absolutely beamed out of the air by the F-80. Because I set him up this time. The thing is, if I went sideways, if I had just flown sideways the same way with the SK-60, this guy would have still pitched up for us and the P-80 still would have gotten the kill. And I wanted to avoid that in order to show you what you can do with an energy trap. I misjudged it because I rushed it. And there you go. That is basically my life gone. Because right now, I should have been dead. Then we go on to land. I'm gonna cut this out for you so you don't have to worry about it. Here we are. There is the Heinkel 162 together with an F-80. So I don't want to dive directly on the 162. Because I don't want to persuade him into running to the airfield or whatever. So I'm kind of going to sit in between here. And the second he goes over there, I can cut him off. The F-80 will catch him. The F-80 will outturn him. But I'm not entirely sure what's going on. F-80 is on his 6. He's getting shots off. And he managed to get a hit in. But in this kind of scenario, where the F-80 is going a lot quicker, and he will be, yeah, there we go, 787 versus 637. Massive difference. And that means that this guy will complete his loop slower than the F-80. However, because he is a little bit slower, he will be able to cut inside of his loop. F-80 notices this, however. He's going to use his energy advantage and his turn rate advantage and his maneuverability advantage and basically every advantage that he has. And he's going to go straight back into the vertical. The 162 is now forced to dive out to get his speed back up. But I am also now here. The F-80 tangled up the 162 in a fight. And I'm now going to interrupt the 162 between him and the airfield. In case he does want to go there. So you can see that I'm staying on the right side. Even though he is going to the left. I'm not turning in just yet. I'm going to make the F-80. Or let the F-80 do a pass basically. And now he's directly below both of us. So I'm just going to dive in. 
I'm gonna... I, I can just pray at this point. I'm gonna have the energy to keep up with this guy. And if AT has the speed, the energy and the maneuverability to keep up with this guy as well. So we shoot him down. And that is going to be kill number 5. Thank you, Mario... Mario Tiddy. God damn it. I wish I had read that uh, name out loud before I did the video. But here we are. Thank you, Mario Tiddy, for the support. And you also played a very fine game. And now let's go back to the usual stuff where I show you the games from my point of view. Well, like you are used to. And here we are with the F7F with the air spawn at the start of the game. Now I saw a Hornet and I was kind of scared and then he dove to the deck. Because well, he, uh, he saw an A1H absolutely mowing the lawn. And I was absolutely ecstatic to not have to deal with that at higher altitude. So there's a 152 with ult here and he needs to go head on. And I dodge it, I don't kill him, and at this point I need to recommit. If I dodge that shot, I die. Because he will be able to very easily pull straight in. The other 152 had to do a little bit of a dive and then a 360. So I had a feeling he won't be able to pull into us. This is risky, because I'm inviting him to kill me essentially. And I won't really be able to get away from him if he manages to line his plane up right. Luckily, he does not. Luckily he's too slow and he doesn't really have the authority to get his nose on us. And we just dive away. I don't want to repeat of that. I'm not going to be outstalling that guy one more time. I was in the position to do it once. If I then do it again, he will stall like 300 meters below me. And absolutely pepper me with his guns. So I'm going to just ignore him for now. And fly away. I noticed that he's flying away also. He's flying towards one of my teammates. So I'm going to switch back and see if I can deal with him. As he is busy with someone else. And he does notice us. We are going to go head on. We are going to shoot a few rounds. We are going to pull off. And again. We get a few hits in. Nothing major. But the F2G is now going to be on him. And he sacrificed a lot of position. Trying to get the shot on us. So right now. I am going to be resetting the fight. See if I can come back in a, in a second here. If so. Absolutely perfect. If not. Not a real issue. We are pushing this guy back to the deck. Where he is real strength start to lack a little bit sure it's still a good fighter but keep in mind it doesn't have the best climb rate is not super fast and if that thing doesn't have real altitude to deal with he kind of runs out of options and he has an f2g running after him at higher speeds making him unable to use his flaps making him unable to turn well enough to really get rid of people we dive on the yak 15p in my eyes he was the biggest priority target right there he's the most dangerous and the most annoying to deal with so i went for him and again it crit in and then we just kind of go vertical again bank some of our speed into altitude and then we run the next train on this blob in the middle the yak 15 is crit and the hornet is actually one of the other prime targets because i don't want that guy to run away reset and be a nuisance later on get a few more hits on the yak 15 hornet is way too slow to really do anything we hold the trigger down down he goes and the yak 15p is now Damaged enough to the point where I can probably leave him alone with the F2G. And I want to go RTB because my oil tank is absolutely busted. So I need to get that oil tank fixed so that I can actually, well, be combat ready again. And if you look at the team right there, it is looking pretty sus. Not looking very great. And I need to go back to that runway as soon as I can. But this Hornet... Does not care about the guy behind him. He does not care about the guy that's below him. He only cares about me. And personally, I would have done the same thing. The RA-2005 is going pretty fast now. But the second that RA-2005 breaks off, this guy signed his death warrant. And I thought to myself, he's catching me anyway. Might as well get close to him before the RA-2005 is too far away. So I'm going to engage in a battle. And I'm not able to really get my nose on target. And he manages to slap my wing off. But as you can see, still completely air ready, air capable. So we just go back to the runway and land. And I wanted to show you this because this is 90% of your F7F games. I don't want to dwell on it too much, but this matchmaker absolutely blows ass. Why is that, you might ask? 6v6 games, every match, four of them will be 288s. And in this game right here... The other two are actually Donier 335s that were ground pounding as well, as you can see in the background. These are actually out of sync. The first kill happened after the, the one you're seeing right now. But that's besides the point. 
half of your time you are just shooting bombers and ground attackers and it doesn't really provide any good gameplay which is why I opted to use the replay system this time. Let me know what you think. If you like it, I might use it again. Otherwise, you won't. And that's all. I'll see you in the next one.